Was the body of Adam and Eve prepared by evolution or is it really, as the book of Genesis says, made by God from the earth? Well, I would say that in this area, concerning the body, the Church does not give a reference. The Catholic Church does not give a dogmatic landmark. Why? Because the origin of the body of man is not directly related to the salvation of his soul. May God take earth directly, he can do it, he is almighty, to make the body of man or to use a pre-existing life, prepared by evolution, that he recovers from DNA, or one way or another, perhaps an adult animal, that it infuses the spiritual soul that gives it the original grace, to make the first man and the first woman, no matter. And that is why Pope John Paul II in a speech in 1996 at the Pontifical Academy of Sciences says that the theory of evolution is probably more than a hypothesis. That if the body of man, no doubt according to scientists, proceeds from a pre-existing life and animal life, on the other hand we must affirm, as a Catholic, that the spiritual soul is directly created by God. The consequence is that for this origin of the body of man someone who is Catholic, therefore, who has the spirit of St. Thomas Aquinas, where science and faith work together, will look on the side of science. As soon as the body of man can pre-exist, in an animal, is opposed to science. I would say, quite the opposite. By studying the DNA of modern humans, comparing to distant cousins such as great apes, chimpanzees, haranguing we find that there is 99% of DNA that is similar. Comparing with Neanderthal men who are cousins, we find that there is even more DNA that is identical. So some people will argue that if you compare human DNA to that of a lizard for example, there may be 90% of DNA that is similar. I do not think that's an objection. On the contrary, it is in the sense of an evolution. Warning. That does not mean that, because some scientists say that everything is explained in the evolution that should be adhered to, in an act of faith. Not at all. In science we keep the critical spirit. Microevolutions are obvious. And so, the passage of the body of hominids animals, Homo erectus, Homo habilis, to the modern man, obviously does not pose problem. These are microevolutions. On the other hand, when we generalize, for the moment, as a hypothesis to macroevolutions, it means the appearance of large sections of DNA radically new, at the very beginning of the primary era, the appearance of the eye, with this incredibly efficient operation, when we generalize like that so quickly, we will certainly too fast. Obviously the hypothesis of an organizing intelligence is not at all to exclude, even if it is not scientific. It is philosophical but it is realistic. On the other hand, for the microevolutions which explain the change of the form of already existing organs and the passage between the old animal men and us, does not pose any problems. One might object, for example, the fact that there is here a particular organ that serves articulated language that apes do not have. There is even a small bone that can be found in the tombs and which makes it possible to identify this articulated language. Well, I would say that, indeed, there is a novelty there and to know exactly whether there is intention or whether it can be done by microevolution, it would be necessary to compare the laryngeal DNA of the great howler monkeys, and that of the to be human but also to look at what happens to hominids who were animals. Did they have that articulate language? What is clear is that this articulate language is perfectly suited to an intelligence that needs more than 30 or 40 cries to express its emotions. 
Of course, in order to express concepts we need words that are composed, so we could say, as philosophical contemplators of nature, that there is an intelligent intention. Another thing, the fact that human sexuality, the female sex is returned such that, to be natural and in total communion, it must be face to face. What is not the case in most animals, at least in great apes, we could object the Bonobos who have several sexual positions but anyway we see that in most animals it is a sexuality which is made, for the reproduction only and for the human being, the fact that there is a confrontation face to face shows that it is made also to express a love, a mutual attachment. Well, I would say that the displacement or the change of shape of the sexual organ is microevolution. We see this change of shape very clearly be done for example in cetaceans which at the beginning is a mammal walking and having nostrils where it is needed, as a kind of dog and after that give the dolphins whose nostrils are at the top of the head because it is more convenient when you swim. It is clear that it is done alone, little by little by evolution, by microevolution. So I would conclude that it is quite reasonable to say that the body of man proceeds by evolution. It does not cause any problem to faith because faith does not reveal to us how God made the body, but rather, why did he make man on earth for what? For what salvation? Now on this area let's stay open. Science is only at its beginning. Comparisons of DNA will be the key to all these questions in the 21st century.